Hello guys, my name is Amit Kumar Sahu and I am a DevOps engineer and uh, today I am going to teach you about the serverless framework. So what exactly serverless framework is and why market has the most demand of the serverless framework. So today we are going to discuss about this and uh, before that uh, don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't forget to turn on the notification. Let's start. Okay guys, so let me just give you an example. Uh, let's suppose as you can see in this picture let's suppose there is a website or the app so we are taking an example as a netflix so what netflix does basically it pro it provides this web series and uh, to watch the videos on its app so let's suppose the netflix has the daytime of users which is thousand users are coming in the daytime because the people are not free at the daytime they use uh, get they get busy in their offices and they busy at the different department and if you talk about the night, so let's suppose Netflix are getting 5000 users at the night. And if, if we talk about the Saturday and Sunday, so they are getting 1000 users at Saturday and Sunday because you know the people are always get free at Saturday, Sunday and they get a lot of time to watch videos and everything. So what basically, uh, so let's suppose if you're, if you're having this kind of app, so what you will do, you will buy an, a two CPU to handle those 1000 users you won't wait to have one CPU to handle these uh, thousand users or 5000 users because you know if you'll get 10,000 users your server will get crash and you will get heavy load and you, you will lose all the users. So basically, so what you will do, you will take two CPUs and it will cost thousand dollar per week for this thousand, ten thousand users. So what, where you are wasting your CPU, you are wasting at the time of five, 5000 users at night and uh, at daytime so your CPU get wasted at the daytime and the night but only it is useful on the Saturday and the Sunday so this is how basically your once you will purchase the server from a computing services like AWS or the Microsoft Azure or or Google Cloud Computing so you will get the waste of your servers so what exactly should be the solution of this so here serverless plays the role of this uh, servers so serverless is not exactly the without server, the always server is behind there. But there is something different which works in the behind of scene. So let's start and like let's see how what exactly serverless and where it uses in the servers and why it is more useful for the company. So there are a lot of benefits of the serverless framework. So we'll discuss about this. So let, let, let go to the serverless exactly what serverless is. So now we will visit to this official website of serverless.com. And as you can see, there are a lot of uh, menus bar up, up this uh, serverless. And here you can see there's a product docs, resources and community and learn. So we'll click on the learn and there's a Y option. So we'll click on the Y. So once you click on the why, there's a lot of things written here, which is, you know, very difficult to understand what exactly it's trying to say us. And it is difficult to understand all those things. But I won't, uh, but I will make you understand properly what exactly it is and why it is more useful to this, com to this any company you know, or for the developers. So as you can see here, there are four categories which are divided and this, these are the four categories that is useful for the serverless. And there are a lot of things apart from that that is that also useful for the serv serverless company or you know people who are develop developing in the serverless. So let's start with the first, which is zero administration. What exactly zero administration is? Now let's suppose if you have a guy in your company which is handling the infrastructure of your server from any service provider company, which is you know uh, uh, AWS or the Google Cloud Computing or the Microsoft Azure. So what? what that person will do they will he will handle all the servers in the service from the service providers and he will waste a lot of time to handle those things now let's suppose if you have 5000 users in your company and you are getting uh, you are, you have purchased uh, your server for uh, for that 5000 coming users now what will happen if you will get 10000 users per day what you will do you 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 won't get any uh, you know, a sudden plan to increase the servers because it's taking a lot of time to increase the servers. So what you will do, the user, you, your server will get crash and those users will go out from your website or, or any kind of app. So here's the zero administration which comes into the serverless that you won't have that you won't have to handle any kind of servers in the AWS or any kind of 
things uh, in the service providers like let's suppose if we talk about the lambda functions in the aws you won't have to handle those parts so this is zero administration so aws service providers is already there which will handle all the servers of your lambda functions or of your app by service providers only so the guy so we'll save the money for that guy you you won't have to hire those persons to handle those servers so you are saving a lot of money from that guy because you know developers take a lot of money to handle those infrastructure and all so this is the first benefit for the zero administration now we'll move to the auto scaling so the, what exactly auto scaling is so auto scaling is a server which handles according to the users now let's suppose as i already told you you are getting 5000 users in your in your company or in in or in any website or in your app and suddenly you'll get 10,000. So as we know, you know, uh, uh, when the festival times comes and if you're, if you're an e-commerce company and in the festivals, a lot of products get purchased in a festival time and you are, you are already prepared for the 10,000 users and suddenly you'll get 20,000 users. So what you will do, you, you cannot change the, uh, suddenly your server, you cannot increase your server. So this is kind of auto scaling, which comes here. You, so the service providers, will auto scale your function so what exactly how how we are creating the functions in the serverless so so in the if you talk about the aws there's a lambda function if you are building any kind of app or any kind of applications or websites so you have to create all those things in a function in a lambda function only now let's suppose in in from the backend part let's suppose you have created an api so that api will get hit and if the 10,000 users come, coming suddenly or the 20,000 users come, coming suddenly, so the server will handle all those users at a time only. And what will happen? Those users won't get away from your website or, or your app. So the users can serve or can suffer, can suffer your website and app properly. And you can make a lot of money from that. You won't lose your customers. You will, you can make, you can, uh, survive your you can survive with your reputation with your app or applications so this is kind of auto scaling which provides from the service providers now let's move to the pay per use which is very very important pay per use is very very important if you if you're if you're new to the company or you are setting up a server for your applications or can any kind of website you will have to purchase server from the company and you have you will have to pay for per month for to the service providers so let's suppose if you're a startup company and you are getting 100 users or 200 users and you already purchase a server for 5000 users hand handling so what so what you are paying you are paying extra money to handle those users and you are not getting those users so you are paying extra money for that so this is this is very very big loss for any company so here paper use comes now what whenever you you are creating any kind of functions to the lambda we if you talk about the lambda functions in aws now let's suppose you have created an api so the whatever the users come and hit those api you have to pay per use according to the functions now let's suppose if you are getting a per day 100 users so you will have to pay for only those 100 users only so whatever you are getting, whatever the users hitting your applications or hitting an API, you have to pay only for that. You won't have to pay for all the servers you have purchased for, you know, uh, to be ready to get the 5,000 users and you are not paying extra money. You are paying for the pay per use. So what exactly this is pay per use. And apart from that, if you talk, talk about the pay per use, now let's suppose you are getting today you are getting 100 customers and tomorrow you are getting 2000 customers so you will have to pay only for those 2000 customers and the 100 100 customers or the users so this is this is very very important and believe me because i'm already a devops engineer and working in a serverless computing so we are not paying that lot of money for that we are paying pay per use only so we are saving a lot of money from that you know rather than purchasing a server from any service providers we are we are just creating the lambda functions and we used to deploy on that and we are paying very less amount of money and believe me this is very less of less amount of money they are charging so this is the big benefit i see 
from the uh, service providers and if you talk about the auto scaling that is also very important you move to the increased velocity what is exactly increased velocity is now let's suppose if you have two employees you have th or two or three employees who are handling those servers so what you will do they will handle your servers they will handle the production they will handle handle the everything the users won't get returned from your website or app so your three employees you are paying extra money for three employees and the, those three employees are totally bu busy with their servers so as we know the service provided in the serverless framework they are already providing the service of zero, zero administration so those three employees can work with the features they can develop more features and they will more they will they won't m more concentrate on administration or any kind of server things you can focus on developing more features exactly so these are the these are the four things are mainly useful of serverless framework and if if you talk about apart from apart from these four benefits of the serverless there are a lot more benefits are there because i'm already developing those apis and everything in a server serverless now just let me give you an example what we do when we create an api we used to authenticate those api for different different users like there's an admin there's a manager then there's a customer so we are authenticating every time and we used to write for every application and we used to write the code for every apis in our code so here this is something which comes what you have to do you have to just visit your serverless framework or any kind of serv uh, service providers and you have to just create their one api and in that parent api you have to authenticate on that part on that space only or on that part only so you you will just write the code for the features and functioning things you won't have to write the code every time for your api for authentication because authentication are already set to the aws service providers so like this kind of benefits are there so i hope guys you understand properly and anything you you won't understand or you aren't understand properly just leave a message on in the description because i read every descriptions messages and i reply to them because things should be clear first of all because before writing before moving to the code things should be clear concept should be clear is very very important thank you so much